Welcome to this three-part video series discussing the OBM installation process. In part one, we reviewed the OBM architecture design. In part two, we covered deployment strategy and planning. And in this part, part three, we will cover the OBM installation and configuration. We will first review the use of the interactive installation guide that provides the installation procedure depending on the selections chosen. We will then install OBM and run the configuration wizard. The OBM installation documentation can be found on the Docs server at docs.microfocus.com by selecting Operations Bridge Manager and then clicking on Install. The information needed for an OBM installation can be referenced here. We will now launch the interactive installation guide. This guide enables us to select the setup type, deployment type, database, the OS, the installation method, and other additional options for installation of OBM, and then provides us with a document detailing the OBM installation procedure. For setup type, we have the choice between enterprise or express. Depending on the selection, additional details are provided on the right-hand side. For this installation, we will choose an enterprise setup. We will perform a single server installation where the gateway server and DPS will be installed on the same host system. Next, we will select the database management system to store the information. The supported database management systems are remote Microsoft SQL Server, remote Oracle database, remote or embedded Postgres SQL. We will be installing using the embedded Postgres SQL DB. We will be installing on a Windows OS, and we will install in GUI mode, where we will use the interactive wizards to install and configure OBM. Any additional options can be selected as needed, and then we click Submit. We are then presented with the resulting installation procedure according to the options selected in the previous screen. If needed, we can change the selections, view the selections, and even print the output. We will click on Expand All to view all the details of the requirements and the installation and configuration procedure. We are presented with details of the hardware requirements, software requirements, certificate information, client system requirements, network configuration requirements, database requirements, and installing user account requirements. We are also presented with considerations to review before beginning the installation process. Then we have the installation procedure with step-by-step -step instructions, including screenshots, which we will cover in more detail when I demonstrate the installation. Once the installation is complete, we are provided with the information for the configuration of OBM. Once again, the configuration procedure is outlined with step-by-step -step instructions, including screenshots. We are then provided with the information on how to enable OBM and how to log on to OBM. Information regarding the review of log files is also provided. It is very important to review this document in detail before proceeding with the installation of OBM. We will now perform an OBM installation. We will be installing a single server deployment of OBM 2022.11 with an embedded PostgreSQL DB on the Windows server. Once the installation media has been downloaded and unzipped, to start the installation, we will go to a command prompt open as an administrator and run install from the directory where the installation bits are located. At this point, the installer will launch and extract files as needed. We will choose our preferred language, English, and click OK. The installation will now verify if there's any other version of OBM installed on this system.
We are then presented with the introduction page, which we will review and then click Next. We will review the license agreement. and accept the terms and click Next. On the product customization page, we will select single server and click Next. We will keep the default installation and data folders and click Next. On the product requirement page, the installation wizard performs various checks to see if the system meets the requirements for installing OBM. If a requirement check fails, the warning needs to be reviewed. We meet all the requirements, therefore we can click Next. On the pre-install summary page, we can review the information and then click Install to start the installation of OBM. We are then presented with the installing page. In a virtual environment, this phase may take about 30 to 60 minutes. Once the installation is complete, we are presented with a Next Steps page where we can choose to configure OBM or quit. We will choose to configure OBM, which will launch the configuration wizard. On the Configuration Options page, we will choose Custom Configuration. This option displays all the configuration wizard options and enables us to specify custom values for all the OBM configuration settings. On the database settings page, we will select create a new database or user schema. We will select embedded PostgreSQL for the database type and we will enter the password. If we click on Advanced, we are presented with the database information. We will keep the default names for the database schemas and click Next. We will not enable identity management, so we will click Next. We will enable HTTPS, but we will select OBM generated certificates to make OBM generate the certificates required for the configuration. 
We can customize the key options and contents of the certificate generated by the OBMCA, but we will use the default settings. Therefore, we will click Next. Since we do not require client certificate authentication, we will click Next. On the Connection setting page, we configure the URL that users use to access OBM. Since we enabled HTTPS, the port is set to 443. We can click Check Port to verify the connection to the web server. If the default port was already in use, a different port would need to be specified. Next, we need to verify the URL. This looks fine, so we will click Next. On the license page, we configure the license that OBM uses. We will use the evaluation license that is valid for 60 days. On the login settings, we need to set the password for the OBM administrator and the JMX password, which is required for logging into the JMX console. On the server deployment page, we define the size of the OBM deployment. We need to select the number of monitored nodes that will send events to OBM. We will select up to 2,000 nodes. If we need to forward data such as service health to Optic DL, then we would select the checkbox forwarding service to Optic DL enabled. We also have the option to click advanced to adjust the maximum memory that, that the Java virtual machine allocates to the OBM processes. We will keep the default and click Next. On the Management Packs page, we can select additional OBM Management Packs to install. Default Management Packs are selected automatically. We will leave this as is and click Next. The Ready to Configure page displays the current settings. This is where we verify that our selections are correct. To change a setting, we can click on Edit. All looks good here, so we will click Next. OBM will now be configured according to our selections. We can now click Finish to exit the configuration and Done for the installation. The installation configuration of OBM is now completed. We can now enable OBM by going to Start. Operations Bridge Manager. And Enable Operations Bridge Manager. To check the OBM status, we go to Start, Operations Bridge Manager, and Operations Bridge Manager status. The UCMDB pre-initializer takes a considerable amount of time when you start OBM services for the first time. On the OBM status page, the pre-initializer description is periodically updated to show the background task.
Once OBM has been enabled, we can log on to OBM from a supported web browser on a client system by using the login page. Before logging on for the first time, the CA certificate needs to be imported to the browser's trusted root certificate store. Therefore, we will export the CA certificate from the OBM certificate inventory by running the OPR-cert-management CLI. We will open up a command prompt. We will change directories to the HPBSM bin directory. And we're going to run the OPR-cert-management command. The dash export option, the name of the CA certificate, the format, and the location. Once the certificate has been successfully exported, we will import the CA certificate to the browser certificate store. This is done by double-clicking the file that was just created. We will click Install Certificate. We will click Next. We will select Place All Certificates in the following store, Browse, and we will select Trusted Root Certification Authorities and click OK. We will click Next and Finish. We will click Yes to installing the certificate and click OK and OK. We can now launch OBM by entering the following URL in the web browser address, HTTPS, fully qualified name of our OBM server, forward slash OBM. We will log in using the default administrator username, admin, with the password we set during the configuration. Click login. After logging in, the username appears at the top right. This completes the video series on how to install OBM. For more information regarding the OBM installation, the OBM online install guide can be referenced at docs.microfocus.com by selecting Operations Bridge Management.